Caleb Amolo is a revolutionary farmer on a mission to prove to the world that even a small parcel of land can earn a good living. Eight years ago, he converted one acre at the foothills of the Kisi Mountains in Kenya into a food forest that is now loaded with productive trees and plants. In one acre, you don't have to plant just, co or just uh, maize or just sugarcane like monoculture. You have to diversify in such a way that you can make money from everything. Like, look at my lumber, look at my gravelia. That one alone is about 2,000 Kenya ceilings. So everything here is not competing, but working with each other in a forest-like system. So I know a lot of people got one acre or less. You can do the same thing I did here and make very good money and earn a very good living without harming the environment. I have uh, <clears throat> 350 coffee trees, 50 avocado trees, 10 mango trees, 20 banana trees, and then I have cover crops, understory, and then I have supportive uh, crops like uh, desmodium. Caleb's incredible food forest follows the way of nature. It's carefully designed to build strong connections between plants, soil, insects and wild animals. Plant communities are the heart of the design, which he talks about in this video. But the important thing really is that every plant in his food forest has many different functions. Vetiver grass is another very good way of con controlling soil erosion. So as you can see the first soil there, if something went wrong and it overflows with a massive rain, vetiver grass is the second line of defense to, to slow it down. I don't know this one in English, but we call it Ndemra. It's a very good nutritious vegetable. Uh, Malabar spinach. Yeah, yeah, Malabar spinach it's up here. Just for the, the same thing for the soil erosion, because this one will also like sponge, slow it, sink it, and this one is very nutritious chayas also uh, the same defensive line. In the whole food forest, you can see like so many lab lab, this, that, they have multifunctionality. Earthworks have become the vital arteries of the food forest. Where previously the region's torrential rains washed away a lot of the topsoil, the swale system stops the water in its track and spreads it more slowly across the land. If it rains here, this turns to, to a huge river with a lot of force. So what I did is I create a J-turn to slow it, instead of coming straight, I made a J-turn. Then I made a swell right here, from one end to the other, and then at the end, this is the end of the swell. So the water comes, this, it's spread, and then it sinks. So this is the first swell. Last night it rained all night, and it was a lot of water, and you can see the swell at work. All the water was captured and spread. Instead of going straight to cause soil, massive soil erosion, it spread and it's going slowly now into the, into, the, into the soil and also into my coffee forest, into my food forest, and you can see from the pictures. And all the swill works, as you can see, water goes in. So this one is the last, we call it sinking swill. After all this, like really, really absorb the water and also the trees, the fruit trees and the coffee, their root system is absorbing a lot of water. Food forests have many different uses. For Caleb, it's allowed him to install beehives for honey. I get almost 50 liters of honey here from the food forest. They help me with the pollination and I help them with the trees. And most amazingly, with all the water that has been stopped and stored in the landscape, a spring has come up that has been turned into productive fish ponds sitting at the very bottom of the property. Caleb's land shows us just how powerful a transformation can occur once nature's ways are honored and copied. <laughs>